Hey, it's Rusty Smith for Record Mix Repeat. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're talking about mix preparation, getting a session ready to go to mix. You've been tracking for a while, you've got a lot of tracks, maybe you have some tracks you're not going to use, you've saved, you've set them aside thinking, eh, maybe I need this in the future. You've got a lot of stuff to clean up and you want a session that's going to be performing really efficiently so you can use a lot of plugins when you're mixing. There's a way to do it and I'm going to show you how. Let's go. All right, here's a song called The Better Days. This is the version Rich One. This uh, version is the last version I was working with and I'm ready to start mixing this tune. However, this session is a heck of a big mess. It does play as a song, as you'll see. It does play, but the session is a mess. So, we got to clean this up before we start mixing. We have to remove the material that's not going to be used in the mix. We have to get rid of all the alternate takes and different layers underneath the tracks. And we need to uh, transform some instrument tracks into audio. Uh, main reason is because we know we're going to use what those instruments are generating. We don't need to have them operating anymore. We're going to render some plugins, i.e., you know, like for the bass amp. Uh, or, or some guitars, some virtual amplifiers and effects so that we can clear up processing space and just clean the session up. So first thing is to throw away things we don't need. All right, we can see that this session has a heck of a lot of tracks. Now these yellowish tracks down here are basically buses that I route things out of to the main output and anything that I know I'm not going to use or I disable I put below this last um, bus here this last yellow bus so I know all these tracks down here I am not going to use so first thing I'm going to do before I get rid of anything I don't want to ruin this session this session has a lot of stuff in it that if I need it and I want to go back to it, I don't want to lose it. So the first thing I'm going to do is save as and give it a new name. And I'll just change the rich one to mix prep. And I'm going to call this two because I've already prepped this once and I don't want to save over the previous one. So mix prep two. The great news now is no matter what I do to this session, I won't lose anything because I can always import from the previous session, the rich one session, into the session if I go, oh, I shouldn't have thrown that away. I need that. I can go back and get it and import it and it'll work. So these tracks here, we're seeing everything that's in the session. We just select these guys and hit Shift T to remove these tracks. For Studio One, that's what you do anyway. It didn't remove these tracks because, hello, these tracks were in folders. They removed the folders, but anything that's in a folder it won't remove. Now we'll select them in Shift T and get rid of them. Okay, that's done. Excellent. We've gotten rid of all the stuff that's not going to be used. Now we got to get rid of uh, alternate layers. Any track that has layers to it, I'll probably get rid of it except for the drum MIDI track. I'll keep that. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get rid of that quite yet. This DI bass here, it's going through some processing. You can see here that there are several edits in here punched in and it's, and it's a comp. So what I'll do first is I'll go look at each one of these edits. Okay, so I heard a little tick here. I'd repair that before I moved on. I'd make sure that little tick wasn't heard. I'd do whatever I had to do to get that to go away and that edit to perform. And so anytime you have multiple edits on a track, you're going to want to repair them and make sure they all work before you get rid of your alternate takes. But once those edits are repaired, just boom, get rid of those alternate takes and then bounce that track to where it's just Command B. And now that's one continuous piece of audio. If you feel confident that the processing you have you're going to keep, you can go in and transform the track to a rendered audio. If you want to free up more processing power, you can transform it to rendered audio and when you do it, you can preserve what you had before and you'll end up with freeing up power and you, you won't have to worry about 
you know, if a year from now you want to remix it, oh, what what exactly was the setting on that Ampeg? Or my Ampeg license expired and I don't have access to it anymore. You can make it permanent by transforming it. That's a good thing. Up here I have an instrument called Impact. And all you Studio One users know what it is. It's coming out of multiple outputs and that virtual instrument is playing live as I solo it right here. So it's coming out of separate outputs, but I know I like what I have here. I know I'm not going to change it, and I like everything that I've got going on and it works in the song. So what I'm going to do is, on this instrument, transform to an audio track. And I will not render the inserts. I want to keep them live, but I do want to render all channels. So the multi-track outs of Impact are showing up on new faders as audio, and the previous instrument tracks will be muted, and the instrument itself will be disabled. So this frees up processing, and it keeps my, right here, this stuff that says snare, hat, trumpet, all the, these things here, they will be now become audio tracks that frees up processing and I still have the beauty of being able to get my hands on it when I'm mixing and there that's a good thing so that's transforming an instrument track to audio good idea when you're prepping a mix next thing same thing here this is a multi instrument it shows up on multiple tracks it's doing this <laughs> As you can see, there's a ton of processing going on here. So it's showing these two separate instruments. Is this instrument, another is this instrument. They look the same, but they're different things. They're bust to here, and they're, they, even it's got effects on it. So I don't want to have to depend on that in the future. If I open this up in a year or two, I want to be able to have audio to play with. So I will do the same thing here. I'll transform to audio track and I will render all channels. Uh, I will not render the inserts because uh, I want to still have my hands on those inserts, but I will preserve the instrument in case I do have the luxury of being able to go back to it. Smart thing to do here before you render an instrument, you see on this track, it's if I highlight it, it's multiple edits and stuff. Smart thing to do here is this part's muted, just delete. This part's muted, delete. Play through it, make sure it does what you want it to do at the break. Make sure it's doing what you want it to do and then all these different edits here. When you transform to audio on an instrument, you're gonna to wanna to have your MIDI as one event. So select the MIDI events and merge into one event by pressing letter G. This eliminates crossfade issues. So it's a good idea to have it as one MIDI event. Same thing here. This is a, an organ, a little Hammond organ plug-in. I don't want to have to depend on a virtual instrument, nor do I want this processor having to trigger it. I'll do the same thing with this. I'll go ahead and transform this to an audio track, similar to the other, just like, like I did on the previous two. Next, any layers that I have that have alternate takes, any tracks that have layers, I'm, I'm just going to get rid of these layers. Before I get rid of a layer, I'll make sure that the edits work, just as I did with the bass. But uh, you know, once I get make sure the, these edits are working, I'll go here, I'll bounce, and then I'll just get rid of that layer. I don't need it. I've committed. I've been listening to this for weeks, and I know it works. Here, this is muted. I know I don't use it. On this layer here, I'd get rid of it, you know. Just see you later. 
I know I'm not using this. Delete them. You know, commit. Boom. All right, you're cleaning things up, making things better for the, you know, your mix. You can always go back and get it from the previous session. You can import it in. Okay, so once you've done this and you've gotten these things cleaned up, uh, your layers, etc., you go over here, go ahead and uh, just save your mix prep. Then we'll go over to our browser and we'll look in the pool. And in here, you'll see not used or whatever, right click and say remove unused files. And there will be a whole list of things because you've just gotten rid of this stuff, right? Make sure you don't check the delete files permanently box. You don't want to do that. And then you say, yeah, get rid of these files. And then you save your session again. Go ahead and save it again. Now this session knows what to look for when you open it. But we don't want to open it from where it lives now. What we want to do is go over here and we're going to save this to a new folder. The thing to do now is pick a location that you know you want it to live, okay? And after you do that, you save there and you'll have a much smaller session. And here I'll show you exactly what happened. I'm not going to save this because I've already done all this one time. All right, here's the song, The Better Days folder that I've been working with for the last couple of months. And here is the file that we started out with, uh, Better Days Rich 1. Okay, and here, over here, is the Better Days Mix Prep folder, and here is what I did uh, yesterday or the day before in order to uh, prep the mix uh, for this song. Now, if we look, we'll look at the information for this folder here, and it contains six and a half gigabytes of, of information, all right? And if we look at this one here, it contains two and a half gigs. It's four gigabytes smaller, and it is not triggering a bunch of virtual instruments. And I can use this session to mix from and have a lot more CPU power available to me because the session is not trying to do as much as the other session was because I've committed and turned things into audio. That's much easier for the session and the software to run and my computer to run. Plus, I can raise the size of my buffer in the software up to like a thousand samples, or thousand twenty-four samples, instead of where I had it at one hundred twenty-eight samples, and it will run a lot smoother. And I will have the ability to use all the plugins I want to use. It's just a heck of a smart thing to do to get your session smaller and running more efficiently before you start mixing. I hope this helped you. I'm Rusty Smith for Record Mix Repeat. Please subscribe if you like what you see, and please come back.